Hello everybody, it's me, Tonic TZW, here in the Tier 7 Tech Tree French Destroyer, Le Fantasque, and we've called this one French Kiss. Um, we do indeed use speed in this one, and we drop the hammer on Red Team. Now, a lot of people ask me to run my builds and captain things on my videos so they can see what I'm doing. So if you want to just watch the replay, skip ahead to 3 minutes and 15 seconds. But here we are, the Fantasque will just do a quick run through of the stats um it is um i think even though the commanders have been nerfed still a very good ship to play it's been made slightly more difficult to play because um, we've lost some of that concealment with the speed boost which was kind of its party trick um but it is still a nice boat to play however one thing that i will say is that it is very much a boat to play solo um you're lacking smoke screens and the number of um, times um i've been asked to drop a smoke screen by cruisers um is unbelievable um so yeah if you're playing your cruisers and you want a smoke screen for some for for a little bit of time look somewhere else than a french destroyer because we don't have it but I'm running a fairly simple build here. But what I have done is um, I'm trading um, some of um, the perks. Like I'm dropping perceptive so I don't have a location for the nearest target. And I am going to run some extra torpedo range because it does help. We've got Philippe Aubignon as our captain. You'll see there we've got subsurface venture on for torpedo speed and reload, um, extending our main battery reload time. And we've got fragile threat, so we're trading some hit points there just to bring that detection down a little bit lower after that nerf. And Torpedo Safari to give us 16% torpedo range, um, but we're also reducing our gun range by using that. And then we've got Destroy or Be Destroyed, so we're losing main battery grouping, but we are giving ourselves some destroyer speed. And this game, we use that speed to good effect. And then our legendary perk is Give Me Speed, which gives us an extra engine boost. And um, extends the duration and limits the um, negative effect um, by having our engine boost um, reload time increased there but we've got Eric Beer and we've got the Blue Ferrara so Blue Ferrara has given us some torpedo speed and Eric Beers who's at 16.4 is giving us some concealment but there we are it's a fairly balanced game um there's a, there's a lot of battleships out there but we've got um you know a few destroyers on each team and um i did ask a wonderful guy by the name of axel forbauer who goes by the player tag i think it's black priest 14 he loves his french destroyers and to be honest he is the oracle of french destroyer play it can be a little bit um hard to deal with sometimes with um the way he comments on things on facebook at times but if you need to learn how to play a ship you go and find somebody who knows how to play that ship very well and i did ask him since the nerf how are you playing this ship and now he is playing sort of speed and um concealment with his torpedoes he's a very effective um destroyer player uh, like i said especially in the french destroyers and so i kind of um i've been grinding this one i've been close to unlocking the tier eight but i've kind of gotten a bit tired of it so i put it to one side and then i thought no we've got to finish that grind and if you just watch this off the start i've hit my engine boost now i know he has his ship up to i think 64 knots but i'm running 56 and a half here absolutely smashing up the side of this flank it's like a dragster off the line and i honestly don't think that these two battleships were expecting anything to get so far up this flank so quickly and 
this could have been a much, much better game. Um, but we just played it too well. The team as a whole played this game too well. And I was a little bit disappointed when it came to an end, to be honest, because I was having a brilliant one. Now that Nagato and the Brandenburg are pushing in towards their cap, you know, normally a destroyer would try and sneak in and contest that, uh, try and turn it. We've put six torpedoes towards the Nagato. We've put three torpedoes towards the Brandenburg. I'm looking at the minimap. I can see how far back my team are. And I just want to play on the limits of detectability. Because the torpedo reload on this thing is, I think, about 66 seconds the way it is at the moment. I've got the range to play with. And there we go. The torpedoes are on the Nagato. Bang, 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 bang. The Brandenburg, you know, takes a load of torpedoes too. And he's burning. I'm thinking, do I put a salvo on him? Is he going to burn out? Now watch. Those two ships die at precisely the same time. And um, I think it's the Nelson takes one of those kills um, I didn't actually see but I'm thinking that must have been with the fires that he had on but I really think that could have potentially have been a double strike to open and I'm like well never mind um, let's get on with the job now that Roma there on red team he is in division with a Paolo Emilio now you'd think that now those two battleships are out of the way that I'm going to push in on red cap now I'm not and it might seem a bit of a selfish play, but as I said, these ships, these French destroyers, I think really do um, have a different play style to them. You have to just play your own game. There's the Paolo in the middle, and I'm sure that um, that Roma was expecting a hard push down this flank. He saw those two battleships disappear pretty much instantly, and he has changed his mind. He knows there's a destroyer out here. He doesn't know. Well, he might know which one it was if he was paying attention. Um, we know where that where that Paolo is, but I'm not going to push into that cap. Um, not because I don't want to, but because I want the team to actually push up. You know, we've opened this flank up brilliantly. The Roma is running. The KGV is there packed behind the, that island. He knows that he's spotted now. And there's another ship in the middle, the Odin, who also knows he's spotted. And this is very much um, what we call in English, putting the cat among the pigeons. Um, or if I think there's an Americanism, which is, um, you know, the foxes in the hen house. And I'm sure that many of the nations have a similar term for... Um, a little bit of chaos being caused by getting something into the middle of something else. But these guys can't afford to sit where they are now. They know they are all spotted. They know there's a destroyer on this flank. And looking at the minimap, I'm pushing these guys out into the open and at the same time the guys that were there at the bottom of decap have decided they're going to pull forward. One thing I did forget to mention at the start of this is that this is a carrier match. And um, there's the carrier. Now, you know me. Um, I don't always play for carrier kills. But as he's there and um, as he's spotted and our torpedoes are available, I see no reason why we shouldn't try to get this guy off the map. Now, any carrier commander that is worth his salt when he knows he has been spotted, will start to move his ship. This guy does not. And um, I am in an absolutely beautiful flanking position right now and just waiting for these torpedoes to reload. Now, the only thing I don't like with the Frenchies is you've got three sets of three on the Fantasque. Um, but you can fire two sets off one side, but a third set will always fire off the opposite side. 
that's where your maneuverability comes in because you can um, just sit on the limit of detection the limit of range and you can put the torpedoes out and then turn back away from the target and run in with the opposite side in and put three more torpedoes into the target it's um it's also a clever little trick because some ships might think that you fired all your torpedoes and the next thing they know is there's another set of three coming towards them so their carrier is really focused on the center of the map we've got control of two caps um we've got quite an advantage at the moment almost 300 points but there we go it's a high caliber for me and we're what seven and a quarter minutes into the game 140,000 damage um the cargo hasn't got a flood on them i've put the other set of torpedoes out there but let's just say there's a very hungry nelson out here and he is going to pick up that kill kgv has seen the torpedoes hit the carrier he's pushed out here either to defend the carrier but in doing so he has put himself in my way and there we go the nelson picks up the kill on the cargo probably less than 10 seconds before my last set of torpedoes reach him so i did feel a little bit robbed there but we're gonna get on to the kgv next and start slapping him around a little bit we are right against the edge of the map but i really do feel supported here now that the nelson um and there's another battleship there i think it might be a gato not quite sure um but the nelson manages to avoid my torpedoes by running into the wreck of the cargo and i was absolutely pissed <laughs> at that because that would have pushed this damage score up to probably around 170 180,000 on this guy alone um so we decide we're not going to let everybody else have all the damage um we've put that third set of tops out there thinking he's going to reverse into them but no he decides to go full forwards and run into the wreck of the cargo again and try and get past it now look at that back turret there we go i knew that was coming always watching the turrets but we didn't turn out quite enough but the nelson has got this guy burning we are just going to put the pressure on put some torpedoes out there and even if he doesn't turn into them if he sees them coming he's going to be turning left and right and trying to avoid them and all he's going to be doing is putting himself in a bad position against the battleships that are behind me he has just wasted a full reload on me and missed um, which means that the two ships behind me have got even more opportunity to take care of him um, so a bit of a wasted salvo there from the kgv yes you could have deleted a destroyer but there are my torpedoes and tickety tick tick boom there we go he's flooding and the nelson picks up the kill again so there's two kills we've missed out on which is disappointing but hey we always say guns off the map is a good thing so thirsty nelson you got the kill well done bravo we're on 159 and a half thousand damage we got that first blood and here comes an Odin and I'm looking at him and I'm thinking 100 pretty much 160 thousand damage he looks like he's got about perhaps 30 35 thousand left on him I think and I'm thinking can, can we actually bump 200 thousand damage in this game because that'd be pretty damn um, awesome for a replay a 200k damage game but there we go roma picks him up himself a clear sky he's still with the paolo emilio in the middle of the map our carrier is focused on them i think they want to try and kill our carrier but what i'm looking for here is to annoy the Orden and again try and bait him into firing at me which means that he's not shooting at the two ships behind me um, but he looks towards me he doesn't fire and so i am going to move away from him 
because the Odin has torpedoes. I am going to use a widespread and again this isn't about getting bang on target it's about position. So if we can force him out of the position that he's comfortable in i.e. bow onto the battleships and he has to turn it gives our team a bigger target to shoot at and all the while I can just stay on my guns knowing I'm safe from everything but secondaries. He's going to turn that's going to put him at a bad angle to those two ships in front of him. He's probably going to try and get another set of torpedoes off. But we get a fire. And the game's over. 166,400 damage. We land 12 torpedo hits. We get 7 floods. We only get the 1 kill. We get a high caliber. We get the first blood. So we absolutely smashed it out of the ballpark in that one. Base XP wise. It's it's a good game. 26-42. Um, but we didn't play the caps. Could have been a 28-2900. But we just played too well. And the game was over. Before we had a chance to make even more out of that one so ggs blue team if you have enjoyed that one smash the like button leave me a comment if you haven't subscribed please do and stick around and click one of these links and watch another video until next time take care of yourselves and goodbye